Panthers. I could see that. I could see a little Devontae Adams maybe. Maybe a little upset there. I feel like the Panthers would need to go somebody to fit their uh, West Coast-style offense. We both actually have Kelvin Benjamin going to the Panthers at 28. He went a bit earlier Tuesday to the Browns, so... Uh, so we have the Panthers, or sorry, Patriots at 29. Who you have going to the I've pretty much already just, pretty much already previewed this one. Uh, you got Eric Ebron to the left there. Uh, give me Eric Ebron. Uh, the Patriots would be thrilled to have Eric Ebron. Yeah. Got, the, got a little bit of injury question with uh, Gronkowski, or sorry, not, yeah, Gronkowski. Mixing up the tight ends for a second. Sorry about that. Uh, don't really know how everything's going to work out with him. And, of course, Aaron Hernandez kind of just gone. Yeah, well, he's in jail playing some football there probably, but... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. All right, so entering the uh, better teams with the 49ers. Mm. Ooh, that is a, that's a tough pick there. Um, hmm. I was feeling that they probably want to go wide receiver here. They're, they love Sammy Watkins. Uh, I've seen drafts where they trade up to four and five to draft Sammy. Yeah, but I don't know. Why would the Browns want to go that far down? That's what yeah, exactly. I've been hearing. And then have like 26 and 30. It's not helping your franchise much. No. Um, I would think they uh, – I actually have Jordan Matthews going here, but I think they'll go Cody Latimer out of Indiana. He's had a kind of a mediocre rise to uh, – to the bottom half of the first round. He's a, like, 6'2", 6'3", good size for a wide receiver. Uh, I saw one one thing on Twitter that said he didn't drop a pass while he was at. Like, when somebody watched his film, there was just no drops whatsoever. So he's got good hands. So I could see the 49ers being thrilled with Vladimir at, uh, at 30. Next up, we have the Super Bowl mm-hmm. runner-up. Uh, Denver Broncos. Who do you have going to them? 31. We got Broncos. Uh, man, I'm dropping everything down here. Um, that's easier. Who do we have? 31. I just dropped a bunch of just dropped a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> I would think after the Super Bowl fiasco with the Seahawks just dominating them. They would have to get something on the offensive line. Something off the offensive line. Okay, uh, since like, you took my Morgan <laughs> since you took my Morgan Moses, uh let's let's go Xavier on this one. It's a good good choice there. I like it. I haven't watched too much of him. Uh can you give us a little bit more on him? Uh he's a I haven't watched too much on him either, but I've watched a little bit. Uh of course, his 40 time was impressive. He's got great blocking skills. Uh, once again, one of those guys that's kind of creeped up draft boards, slightly getting higher and higher and higher. And I think he could be uh, alongside Zach Martin. Uh, originally, I had uh, Xavier above uh, Zach Martin, but as as the months as the months progressed, I realized that Zach Martin was better, but. Uh, he would be a great pick for the Broncos. Uh, he could fill up that gap that uh, the Broncos need. Obviously, they don't want to get dominated like they did in the Super Bowl because that was embarrassing. Uh, but he would be a great selection for the Broncos. So now that six offensive linemen we've had taken in the first round, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Do you think the offensive lineman uh, pool is very, uh, let me say, is is deep? Um, I wouldn't say it's deep. I'd say it's very top-heavy. Uh, I feel like after Cyrus Quanjo, it kind of drops off a lot. There's, obviously, there's Joel Batonio and mm-hmm. and Trey Turner, but I feel like that after Quanjo, those top seven guys, they all could be first-round talent, but uh, those top seven then the offensive lineman pool kind of drops off. Don't don't be surprised if we see, like, the top seven go and then you don't see an offensive lineman for a while. You'll probably see a bunch of teams reach for other offensive linemen, like centers or uh, other off- 
offensive tackles, but those top seven, they're, they're solid offensive linemen, so I think it would be kind of top-heavy. So at the Seahawks, what would you say their needs are? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Not much, yes. Just to say the least. Uh, definitely the most all-around team in the NFL. Uh, they did lose they Golden lost, Tate. They lost Golden Tate in the offseason. They probably would have to go wide receiver here or maybe something on uh, maybe something in the secondary, maybe a tight end like Jason Morrow or Austin Safari and Jenkins. Uh, but... I think they should. They would go Allen Robinson here, who I have in my mock going at 32. Uh, I remember watching film on him. He had a lot of plays where I was. He had one play I think it was against Michigan when Hackenberg threw a ball towards the end zone. Somehow he managed to go up. He has a huge vertical. He can, he went up, got the ball, got one foot in, and scored in like the last few seconds. I remember I played that play over maybe three or four times because I was I was just blown away at that. And uh, Robinson would be a great pick for the Seahawks, thirty-two. And I see him as a guy that he when I watch him he finds seams in the defense. Yeah. Very very good at that. And well, he's got he's got good speed for his mm-hmm. eyes as well. Okay, as we look as we look back. Are there any surprises of not being in the first round? Hmm. Uh, if there is any surprise, I'd say Jimmy Ward, definitely. Because uh, he's a great safety. He's a... Uh, of course, he played at a small school like Northern Illinois. It was probably overshadowed a little bit by Gordon Lynch. Uh... But he's a great safety. He's one of those sleepers that most teams probably won't think to draft. But I think he could go as high as somebody like uh, the Rams at 13 if the Lions choose to take Quinn Dix. Uh, probably somebody like the Steelers or the Cowboys. But I see him as a first-round guy. Uh, who do you have as a surprise of falling out of the first round? Well, I don't have as much as a surprise, but uh, I was seeing earlier, you know Shane Howell. Do you know Shane Hallam on the Twitter? Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. I, th- I thought I lost you for a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> do you know Shane Hallam on the Twitter? I think I do. I think and I might follow him. I'm not sure. And he had Bradley Roby going first round. Do you see Bradley Roby sneaking into that first round? Uh, I think I, I could see him going in the first round. Um, he has, he isn't the biggest corner, but... Uh, I think he's probably better, a little bit better than Kyle Fuller. Uh, but yeah, I could see him going in the first round, most definitely. He's, I could see him going in the late first round, not too high in the first round. If anybody picked him above, like, 20, like, where the Cardinals are, I think that'd be a pretty big reach to me. But I think he could go somewhere in the late first round. But probably better suited in the early second. So, Wait. looking back, we had, I spoke too soon, we had wide receivers drafted in the first round. So, that's a pretty good mark. Uh, no running back for the second straight year, which is actually only the second time, if that does happen, the second time ever. Yeah. Uh, what running backs do you think could possibly go in the first round? Uh, none. <laughs> none at all. It's a very, oh, uh, I was hearing this not long ago, it's a very uh, diminished position in the uh, NFL. Very diminished. You still need a running game, I believe. You still need a running game, but uh, I don't think. I think uh, you, you got uh, you got uh, Carlos Hyde, I think, is going to be the first one taken off the board. Completely agree with you there. Even though I'm not the craziest on Carlos Hyde, I'm more crazy as it may seem. I'm more of a Bishop Sankey fan on it. Yeah, I, I can. I was actually watching the uh, NFL Draft Academy on him, and the way he can shift and just all of a sudden change direction, that's one of the more special things about him. Not many running backs in this class can do that. Of course, there's somebody like Lacey Strunk or D'Anthony Thomas, but those guys are more, more I guess, uh, speed specialists. But they should think he has a good combination of speed, 
uh, shiftiness and actually is pretty decently sized for uh, a running back. Um, I also had Terrence West out of Towson as possibly a second round running back. Uh, I actually watch the Division One AA a lot, um, and I watched the championship game and all of the excuse me uh, parts throughout that with uh, the tournament, and he was impressive. The way he would he would bowl through an offensive line and get into space. He wasn't the fastest guy, but he had very good speed. He's actually my uh, third rated running back behind Hyde and Sankey. Uh, but yeah, those are the only three running backs I could see possibly make a very, this is a hard maybe, possibly, or maybe going in the late first round. Cause so you have him over a Trey Mason, a Jeremy Hill? Yes. Uh, Jeremy Hill is, a close, uh, is closely behind Terrence West, but I'm not a big Trey Mason fan, actually. He uh, hasn't, I mean, of course he had the great season with Auburn, but I felt like his Heisman, uh, his Heisman nomination and finalist, it was kind of unjust. Because he only, I mean, I had heard of him before the finalist, but to most people he was kind of like an unknown name. So I felt like he was kind of a wild card there. So I have him as my seventh rated running back behind uh, Kadeem Carey and Andre Williams. Okay, and what about quarterback? Texans, ugh. They did uh, not... Texans kind of got screwed in the situation. Yeah, um, I... So they got top, all of the top-tier quarterbacks going in the top 20 pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, you got Garoppolo out of northern... Or, sorry, southern Illinois. But then after that, it's kind of a, a steep drop-off. Of course, there's the yeah. sudden Tom Savage hype. Yeah, Tom Savage, Tom Savage, Tom Savage. Ah, uh, which is ridiculous. If some team actually decides to take him in the top forty, that's off the wall bizarre. They're they're, they're making a terrible decision. I mean, they did take, they did offer him a draft, uh, you know, to go to the draft, but he didn't take it. So, w- meaning that they offered him a draft uh, to go to there, I have right. to think somewhere someone's someone's taken him. I, I would say someone second round might might take him, like maybe uh, Cincinnati Bengals. I go with. Yeah, I mean maybe there's something the scouts see in him that we aren't seeing, but I'm he's, not a big Tom Savage fan. He's got the measurables. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, uh, another surprise with, I mean, I guess not really a surprise after this, but Timmy Jernigan falling out of the first round. After, I guess, the failed drug test, um, I actually uh, tweeted about this earlier, asking, like, where do you think guys, where do you think uh, Timmy Jernigan will fall? One guy actually said to me, uh, he'll fall two rounds. That thought was a bit extreme, but I think that he'll fa- probably fall into the first round since it took them this long to figure out that he failed a drug test. <laughs> so I think he probably could be a second-round steal if he keeps, like, if he doesn't get in trouble with the drug test anymore. So that could be a possibility. I had him going going to the Giants at 43. See, I, I've always seen him as a first-round guy until the uh, drug test failed. So I actually had him at 14 to the Bears. So probably should slightly adjust that. Um, another guy that's really intriguing is Dominique Easley. He, he could go, like... Unfortunately, he had those two ACL tears, but if he hadn't had those, he would go first round. He'd probably be one of the top defensive linemen. I think he'll probably still go somewhere in the second round as well. Second round, who do you have him? Uh, I think I have him going to... Wait, let me see. Let me see. Uh, I got Where do you have? I don't have him in the second round. Woo-hoo. Kind of bizarre. Um, <laughs> guess I kind of just forgot. Um, I would say, I would say probably he would go 